Hi, welcome to the Divine Insight Show, and thank you so much for joining us wherever and whenever you're doing so. I know that it is no accident that you're here. I'm so excited to introduce you to this week's guest, Dr. Melanie Dean. As a psychologist and researcher, Dr. Dean has spent her career helping people work with their thoughts and emotions to create their dreams. And she's here with me today to talk about the incredible power of intuition and her brand new book, The Hidden Power of Emotions. Melanie, thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the show. Thank you, Travis. I'm so happy to be here. Appreciate the opportunity to talk with you and to talk with all of your listeners. Awesome. Yeah. And thank you so much. And, you know, as somebody who I guess I'm not, I'm not formally trained in science, but it was something that always fascinated me when I started to learn about, you know, uh, you know, how the energy body works, for example, mm -hmm. when I started to do energy medicine. So I'm always thrilled and excited to talk to people who who really have more in-depth experience in the science behind how uh, things like intuition work and and with you you know you do talk about intuition as having a real scientific basis with real energy and quantum power yes can you can you elaborate on what you mean by that well let me just start off with what are emotions made of and intuition is an emotion it is your resonance with what is true and right and and for you, it's an emotion of resonance, of understanding truth inside of yourself. And all of our emotions, they are made out of molecules, which are made of the same stuff that everything in the universe is made out of. So they are made out of things like hydrogen and oxygen and nitrogen. Those are the elements of energy that everything in the world is made of. And our emotions are made of those same elements of energy. So the molecule that lots of people have heard of that we tend to call the love molecule is called oxytocin. So it is made out of car carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and it has two little sulfurs in there. You probably <laughs> are familiar with sulfur when eggs get stinky, right? right. Only your molecule of love isn't stinky. So <laughs> that energy is real. Molecules of emotions, your body makes them every time you have an emotion. And deep inside those molecules, inside the elements that make that up, there is 300 quadrillion waves per second of subatomic quantum power. Wow. Now your body, it's a heavier, slower moving energy mass, and it only has 100, less than 100 waves per second of energy that's happening in the mass of your body compared to the power of your emotions with 300 quadrillion waves per second. So just to connect that with how it's powerful inside of you and outside of you, the reason why that's powerful is that your emotions are waves of energy and they have power when they get in sync with each other. So the waves move together. And when they move together, they share information. They share encoded information. And that is the power of your emotions at work. Now, some of your emotions are more powerful than others. And I suspect we should take a little pause there before I get into that aspect. So is did what I explained there makes sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think for people who, who kind of going back to like some of the basics that you talk about, you know, in your book and in your work, it's really about atoms and molecules, you know, we are all made up of these things. And mm -hmm. what was important about what I heard you say is that the power of the emotions is stronger than even our physical body. Yes. And that they have this power innately inherent within them to create, as we understand from, you know, the law of attraction days, right? Yes. That, that what we, what we think about, we attract. Yes. And so what I understand from what you're saying is that that power of the emotions and the frequency 
is creative. Yes. Okay, great. So um, how does that tie into uh, a person's intuition? Because I know you talk about intuition as connecting um, a person with the desires of their heart. Yes. Uh, can you explain what you mean by that and why that's important? So the energy of your emotions communicates with these sinking waves, both inside your body and outside of your body. The quantum communication is what allows our creativity to go to work. Those are the energy waves that are syncing up outside of our body. Now, there's so, so interesting that your intuition, if you think about it, when you have an intuitive knowing within yourself, you rest in this positivity that this is right. You have a calm knowing within yourself, this is right. You recognize that it, while it's calm, it's also a conviction. It's also a bump of recognition, a bump of resonance, a bump of certainty that this is right. Well, it's interesting that these waves of energy that connect outside the body in the quantum world the quantum world is where energy allows creativity to take place as opposed to the mass of our body operates under some little different laws of physics, but the quantum physics is where the creativity takes place. There's this interesting research out of Sweden from the Blue Brain Project that supports quantum physics. And in this research from the Blue Brain Project in Sweden, it shows that this these waves of energy as they come together at the point in which you feel this conviction, this resonance, this knowing inside of you, your waves of energy experience a bump up. They experience heightened energy. They actually have 10 times greater energy when they are in sync with that bump height. It comes in at point five, five decibels per Hertz, as opposed to when you're not in sync and you're not powerful with your waves syncing up and having that conviction of knowing and certainty, that's 0.05 decibels per Hertz, about a 10th less. So your power is in the calm, quiet convictions of both your intention, what you desire, and then your intuitive guidance, which gives you that same bump of knowing, that same bump of conviction that says, this is right for me. So how can folks foster that environment within themselves, even those who might, let's just say, have been struggling with, with identifying their intuition? I know you, and I, I completely resonate with the, the, the you know, intuitive senses, knowing what you know, without necessarily knowing why you know it. Mm -hmm. And what, what you so beautifully um, illustrate in, in your book and your work, which is how to create those techniques which allow folks to sit in that quietness of what you're describing as what they want, for example, and boosting up their personal power to create the intuitive knowing of how to get it. Yes. Uh, much like you describe in your book, the, the story of your, uh, the unfortunate situation of having lost your dog mm -hmm. for, for, a pound of, for a certain amount of time. And you, and you sat quietly and felt your dog as if they were already back. And then you intuitively felt like you should get in your car and drive randomly to this house that wasn't even the house where the dog was at, but the person who had the dog had left their phone number at that house. And I, and I thought, you know, that so beautifully uh, describes the, the following the intuition without necessarily knowing why. Yes. Because that, uh, and a lot of times that's what I've done in, in my life as I experience my intuition. You go where you feel like you need to go, but you don't necessarily know why you're going there, but you know the destination, which is fascinating. And like, um, a lot of people have, have read, you know, Mike Dooley, who talks about that as, as the internal GPS system. Yes. Following your intuition. So, yes. So can you um, share some tips or strategies 
for when people can know when their intuition is talking to them? Yes. Um, so I'm so glad you mentioned the um, law of attraction and the getting connected with what it is that you desire. And so much of the time, you mentioned that we tend to ignore these hunches and nudges that we have. And right. those often are our intuition talking to us. So I encourage all of you listeners to not ignore those. So I'm gonna give you an example um, that I also talked about in my book. And it was such a interesting example of not ignoring hunches. And then I will explain how you can cultivate this inside of yourself. Beautiful. So Thank I you. remember this was a few years ago when my family was taking a trip to visit my daughter overseas. And my daughter needed a medication so that she couldn't get where she was. And I had set my intentions in my quiet time in the mornings to have a calm, smooth, easy preparation for my trip and to have everything needed for my family to have a good, happy, comfortable trip. So this was a couple of days before we were supposed to leave and I was gonna go get my daughter's medication that day. And first I was gonna to go to the gym. So I'm mom driving to the gym and all of a sudden I get this strong inner nudge an inner like push inside of myself, turn the car around, turn the car around. And I'm thinking, well, why do I need to turn the car around? Did I leave the burner under the soup I was cooking that day? Mm. <laughs> now, okay, so I turned the car around because I do know enough to pay attention to my inner nudges. First of all, I stopped the car and I got quiet. And I thought, is this inner nudge a real one I should pay attention to? And the answer was yes. So I did turn the car around and then I came home wondering why am I turning the car around again? Was it the soup? And I quickly realized, no, it wasn't the soup. And I had very clear push knowing inside of myself, go to the pharmacy now. So I did. So I went to the pharmacy, I gave the prescription and the woman said, oh my goodness, our order, I have to order this. I don't have enough of them. And it's due to go out in just a few moments. And so I need to even let you go because I, if, if I'm going to get this order in. And mm. so in, for me to have my daughter's medication in time, I needed to be at that pharmacy before I went to the gym. Before they so made the order. Yes. Yeah, so the, so my intuition said, go there now, now, not later when you had planned. And that is what allowed me the fulfillment of my desires. So that was my intuition talking to me. Now, my intuition was talking to me in the heat of the moment, so to speak, and your intuition is stronger and can talk to you more clearly the more you practice it. So it's so very helpful to practice it during your quiet time first. So if you're listening to this podcast, I imagine you already are knowing the value of your quiet time every day of being in touch with yourself and being in touch and in tune and connected with your world. So in this quiet time, you probably also already are familiar with what it feels like inside of you when you know something is true for you. So Travis, what are some words you would attach to that when you know something is true for you? Um, so, and I'm just going to get my light back on here. It went off real quick and I'm sorry. So yeah, I'm that's okay. that back I think, it, you know, if, if something is true for you, then you have the inner knowingness, uh, uh, confidence, you have uh, assurances, you have, um, it was interesting because as you were talking about that experience, I want, I wanted to question you about the difference between a projected ego desire in that moment and what is the actual intuition and what and the difference between those frequencies because that's where most of the confusion comes out for people yeah but th those are the first things that came to mind as you were asking well such good uh descriptions and also such a good question because when we're in our ego place and we have an ego desire we often are full of mental chatter about why we want that, why it's important, or mental chatter about how come we should have it and we have a lot of um, investment in the outcome in a certain way. Mm 
So our ego wants a particular outcome and it's very clear about the outcome and it often has an anxious feeling with it because we are very motivated to get what it is that our ego is desiring at that time. So when you are in touch with your intuitive guidance, you will be in a calm place. You're open to the way in which there, this is a large world. There are many opportunities for how you can get connected with your desires. And you are open to that. You are open to those opportunities of how to get connected with your desires. And then when you are really in touch with your intuition, you will be calm, you will be relaxed. Most of the time, a feeling of eagerness and a smile will come to your face when that's right for you you will know it and it will not have with it anxiety. It will not have mental chatter of why or how or shoulds. It will not have any of that. It will be a calm, eager, hopeful, peaceful knowing within yourself. Beautiful. I'm curious to your thoughts about something that I've uh, come to believe myself and I'm curious uh, your reaction to it. Uh, what I tell people is when they are intuitively feeling, I don't know, that's a no. That's not a, con that's not a confirmation of your intuition saying, yes, that's true for you. So if I say, I always tell people, if you don't know, that's a no. Don't do whatever it is that you think you might want to do because your intuition isn't clear yet. Rather, you, it's not the right time or maybe you don't have enough information. What are your thoughts on that? I think that's really wise, Travis. I think that's good advice when somebody is, is having a feeling of, I don't know, that that's not their intuition. I want to clarify though that you can have intuitive guidance that feels right for you and it makes you a little nervous because you're not sure how that is going to carry out or you're not sure how it's going to work. I remember a time I had a big decision to make and it related to my brother and we'd been having some difficulties together and I felt so clear. I had an idea of what was right to do and I thought, oh, this is perfect. So my mind had worked a solution. I had worked a good solution in my mind and I thought, this is, this is, this is it, this will work. So then I took that to my calm, quiet, inner wise knowing place, my intuitive place. And I got a no no, this is not the solution. Mm -hmm. And instead a vision came forward of how to do it. And I thought, hmm, I don't understand how that's gonna work. So I had a, I don't know how that's going to work response, but mm -hmm. my feeling, my feeling was like, this is it. So while I didn't understand how it was gonna work, I had an, I don't, know how that's going to work. My feeling of knowing that that was right for me, that was calm, pe peaceful, hopeful, and eager, even mm. though I didn't know how it was going to take place. So there's a little nuance in those words of, I don't know. Is it an I don't know because it's not settled, it's anxious, it's full of, mm, not not quiet. It's not calm, quiet, clear, resonating with what you know for yourself. So there is a little distinction there. Right. Now I have a strategy that I can share that's one of my favorite strategies for how you can really strengthen your intuition and use it in moments like that when you have an I don't know moment. Mm. So first of all, I would encourage everyone that's listening to write down their answers to the question that we discussed earlier, which is how would you describe for yourself when you do know, when you feel calm, clear, and certain of what is right for you? We've all had those moments. We all have those times of that knowing we all experience it differently. Some people, they just have an inner peace and inner calm. 
Some people, it brings a boost of excitement and recognition and a great big smile to their face like, this is it, <laughs> yay! So we all have a different way of recognizing that within us. So I will share with you if you're having trouble to have confidence in when your intuitive guidance is giving you a thumbs up or a thumbs down, because that's really what we need. We really need that confidence that our intuitive guidance is saying, yes, this is right for me. This is right for us. Or no, this is not right. So you can practice this. And the way to practice it that I like to do is to get clear on what my yes, no signal is from my intuitive guidance. So I review this in chapter 11 of the book. And I'll go over it here. What you can do to get clear on your own personal yes and no signal, because this is your signal from the way you will recognize when your intuition is talking to you with a yes or a no. You can start by asking yourself an easy yes, no question and pay attention to what it feels like inside of yourself with the answer. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can say, my name is Gertrude. Now, if your name's Gertrude, choose a different name. But if your name isn't Gertrude, pay attention to what is the feeling inside of yourself that says no, because that's not your name. So it's a no. What does that feel like inside of yourself? Do you get a little tension in your stomach? Does your mouth kind of pinch up in a mm -mm? Do you have kind of a tightening of your muscles? Do you just have a calm, clear nope? Now, some people have said to me, I don't feel anything. You tell me to do that and I don't feel anything. Well, I would say you're just not quite in tune yet because you do feel something. You have a no, your body knows that's a no. So ask yourself perhaps a different question that's still clear, but is a clear no. Like maybe there's a time in which you've had a misunderstanding with somebody and you, caused some hurt, you caused something to happen and you feel badly about that. I'm guessing you didn't mean to cause hurt. So a question you could ask yourself is you could bring that image to mind and you could say, did I intend to cause hurt? Your answer is gonna be no, you did not intend to cause hurt. Well, what does that no feel like inside of your body? Is that a calm knowing of a no? Is that a no that just is a rest? You rest back in the knowing. So that is your body giving you the knowledge of how you can tell when something is true or not true for you. Now you can do the opposite. Now this time with your name, say, my name is, so Travis, you would say, my name is Travis. And you are going to pay attention to what that yes feels like inside of you. Where do you feel that yes? Do you feel that yes in a smile on your face? Do you feel that yes in a happiness in your heart? Do you feel that yes in a peacefulness in your gut? That yes is the same way that your intuitive guidance will talk to you every single time you ask. So be sure to ask your intuition questions that will be in alignment, like, is this best for me to do now? Is this the right solution? Is this hunch? Is this nudge one I should listen to? Is... So mm -hmm. ask in a way in which your intuitive guidance can help you in that way with your yes and no responses. Thank you. I love that. And I think uh, it's also helpful as you've described the follow-up question, are you sure is this really the solution? Because I think we can we can project, as we were talking about earlier, what we think the solution should be, and then presume it to be the case without asking our, our true higher self, if you will, or our intuition that very question. And just for those of you watching on, on the YouTube, uh, I just want to show you the book here. It's uh, The Hidden Power of Emotions. That's the book that Melanie is talking about that was just released. Very exciting, how to activate your energy field and transform your life. And what I also appreciated about the book was the very simple, uh, though elegant exercises and, and tips, uh, tools 
uh, strategies that you describe for folks, because I think, you know, you know, we 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 tend to overcomplicate situations often in our lives, and uh, having things broken down in a way that are easy to apply is so wonderful. And one of the things that I really that really resonated with me was your description of um, power zappers and power boosters in relation to a person's personal power. Can you talk just a little bit about what those are? The and in, in the book, in every chapter, I give lots of examples and stories for how to apply the bit of science in that chapter to your life. And most of the time we have patterns of um, emotional beliefs and emotional triggers and things that are um, hard for us that come about fairly regularly and often outside of our awareness. So in the power zappers section, see I'm a psychologist by training so I can't help but try to integrate this into life right. and how to make us more powerful. And so in the power zapper section, I give common examples for how we often give away our power, siphon off our power without our awareness. And I try to increase awareness into those seeming automatic responses that are not helpful to us. And then following that, I will give a power booster strategy for how to feel more powerful and to release those unwanted strategies and get into a more powerful frequency of waves inside of yourself that connect outside of you to bring you what you focus on. Yeah, and I love one of them that you talk about that I think I've experienced in my life a lot. And folks who've been paying attention to the show or know, know me, I've uh, struggled in active addiction for much of my adult life. And um, there's a lot of self-blame that comes with that self-harm mm -hmm. situation. And you talk about that, that breaking the bonds of blame habit is one of the most empowering and transforming things a person can do for themselves. Yes. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you mean by that? So when we blame, whether we blame others or whether we blame ourselves, we are giving away our power. We are giving away our power to make a change because when we stay stuck in blame, it allows us just that to stay stuck. We are either blaming ourselves and we feel powerless when we continue to blame ourselves and we don't shift to doing something that makes a difference in our lives. So staying stuck in the blame is to give away your power in that moment. So a better use of your energy is to acknowledge whatever it is that you've done that you, you wish you hadn't done. Because blame is that. Blame is saying, beating yourself up about what you did that you, you think was terrible to do. Well, you did do that, which is why you're blaming yourself. So in your calm and quiet time, will you acknowledge that? Just say, yes, I was in a different place then. I sure wish I hadn't done that. And allow yourself the forgiveness. So start with allowing yourself to forgive yourself for doing something you wish you hadn't done. Now you are here today, you are desiring to be in a different place. You are desiring the growth and the healing of that moment. So allow yourself to have that. So in your calm and quiet time, where you've allowed yourself to let go of even just one piece of the blame, because it might be a complex blame. It might have many layers. So you may do some calm, quiet work with yourself in which you allow yourself to release one piece of it. Excellent, absolutely excellent and know that you will come back and do that again with another piece of it. Perfectly powerful way to use your energy. So yeah. as you have allowed yourself to release a bit and forgiven yourself for that little bit, then you ask your intuitive wise self, what is mine to do to heal this, to bring about something a little bit different in my life that's in keeping with what I want? and listen to your intuitive guidance. You will have lots of good guidance because the power of your energy wants you to go forward. And that is connecting you with the desires of your heart. So listen to your intuition that will connect you with the desires of your heart. 
Thank you. And always we would talk about, you know, doing whatever thing, doing the action part. You know, a lot of us might sit in contemplation about intuition, but then be fearful about the action piece. And I would definitely encourage folks to try the action piece as well, because that, that incorporates it into your experience. Um, and I wanted to ask you, because there's a lot of times that people can get really stuck for a long period of time in a certain emotion or, um, you know, particularly think about now, so many people are facing challenges financially, personally, politically, there's a lot of chaos going on uh, that people can just really feel overwhelmed. And those sensations can really be um, uh, paralyzing for folks in their lives. So uh, can people transform their emotions in a sustainable way? And how yes. might they do that? Absolutely, that is such a good question. So I am just going to add a part one to the part two we've already discussed. So the part two is the calm quiet of getting in touch with your intuitive guidance. Because you, we already know that when we have a pathway forward, it can calm down those difficult emotions. So your intuitive guidance is the second step in transforming challenging situations and emotions to what you want them to be. So the first step is in setting clear, calm, peaceful intentions for what you want. Now that's hard to do when you are stuck with anxiety and worry about difficult situations, particularly in the times we're living in now. So when you find yourself in a very large challenge and those emotions are strong and big for you, and it's hard to just say, I'm gonna shift them to something more positive. One way you can do that is to ask yourself to get in touch with what is it that is important to you in this situation. Now, it's not going to be something that's important to you related to changing somebody else. It is something that is important to you. You value it. So if you're in a situation, for example, with people who have a very different opinion than you, and it, that pushes on your values and you feel upset, you can ask yourself, what is it that I really value in this? You likely value the relationship that you have or you wouldn't be talking with these people. You also likely value being understood and therefore you also understand that they want likely the same thing. You likely also value making a difference in the world and making the world a little bit better, which is why you had such intense emotions about that. So you can shift your energy by feeling the gratitude for what it is that you value. The gratitude for having the acquaintances or the family or the friends that you're talking with that have a different opinion. The gratitude for wanting to make a difference in the world and get in touch with your own desires, your own in, uh, intentions of what is important to you. And when you shift to that place of focus, then you can take that focus into your calm time of seeking intuitive guidance on how to bring that forth in your life, what to do, following your hunches and your nudges and your intuitive guidance for bringing that forth in your life. Thank you, I really appreciate that. One of the things that I also, uh, that really resonated with me was the exercise where you talk about, uh, you describe how readers can laser focus their waves uh, like a laser. Uh, can, you, can you briefly talk about how that technique works? Um, so I'm going to uh, just remind folks that waves are powerful and they vibrate and have quantum power when they get in sync with one another. So when the waves are moving in different directions and they're chaotic, they can't sync. So anger, worry, anxiety is in this chaotic uh, wave pattern and your waves of calm, clear intention can get in sync with one another. 
Now that's more powerful, just like a laser is more powerful than a flashlight for shining longer, more powerful distances because laser lights, you know, you're familiar with those laser lights that shine onto right. a screen, um, like a little right. red dot when you're in a presentation and the red dots on the screen. So that's a laser light. The reason why it can shine so much further than a flashlight and more pinpoint powerful is because those waves are in sync. So the photon waves, those are a, it's a particle and those, the waves of that particle are moving together. And that's why it's powerful. So your focus, what you focus on is a way to get powerful. And you can focus by narrowing when you have anxiety that feels out of control and worry that feels out of control. You can shift and narrow your focus to just one thing that you feel grateful for. It doesn't matter what that is. It's interesting that there's research that shows that feeling grateful automatically makes these waves come into sync, smooth and even where they can come into sync. And so it doesn't matter what you feel grateful for. It doesn't have to have anything to do with your situation as before I suggested you find what's important to you in the situation. That is a good strategy to use in your calm, quiet time. But in a situation in which your focus is like, wow, anxiety, fear, and you just want to be able to make a shift and calm it, then just focus on anything you feel happy for that makes you, brings a smile to your face and makes you feel grateful, anything at all, your pet or your nature or a loved one in your family or being able to sit on your deck and enjoy the sunshine, anything that brings a smile to your heart automatically creates that good shift. Thank you. And you talk about the, the coherence that that creates in the heart, which is something that there's scientific yes. data that supports how having coherence in your heart with gratitude and love not only helps heal what's going on in your body that might be um, imbalanced, but it actually, as you described, aligns you to what you truly want much more quickly than when we try to force situations to happen. So, um, uh, as we close out, get closer to the end of the show, I want to ask you, is there anything else that you'd like to share about uh, the power of intuition or the hidden power of emotions, your book, um, that we haven't already talked about? Um, I would like to share and just uh, ask everybody to know inside of themselves that they have the power to achieve everything in life that you want. Now that's a tall statement to achieve everything in life that you want, but you have that power, that power to have joy and happiness and fulfillment, financial abundance and security, a meaningful life. That power that you have can also run alongside the challenges that you experience. They're not antithetical to each other you can use the challenges to increase your power. And so I just wanna share with you that that power is fully yours and available. We shared a little bit of it today. I shared a little bit of the science. We discussed a little bit of how to apply it to your life. Um, I have, a, if you want to go deeper and you want a little more information, then you're welcome to view a live free webinar. Well, it's not going to be live by the time you view it. It's a free webinar <laughs> and you can connect to the free webinar by going to my website, melaniedean.com, M-E-L-A-N-I-E-D-E-A-N.com. And you can click on the link and you will be able to see the free webinar, which is called Unlocking Your Emotional Power, Why Your Intuition is Real and How to Use It to Get the Answers That You Need. Now, I will also say how to use it get, to get the answers that you need when you need them. Mm, so your intuition that. is real. The webinar gives you more information on why it's real and how to make it work in your life. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And is that you, how you prefer folks to get in touch with you if they're interested in working with you is by going to your website, uh, melaniedean.com? Yes, there's a good way to get in touch with me. You can contact by email. Um, so yes, and you can access the book through the website also just click the, you know, button on the book and it'll give you more information about it and a place to order it if you'd like. 
Awesome, terrific. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for being with me today and with our audience. I really appreciate your time and in sharing the wonderful wisdom and insight with our audience. Thank you, Travis. Thank you for the time to connect with your viewers. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you all so much for participating, watching and listening. It's no accident that you're here. Hope you take great care of yourself. Have a wonderful holiday and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you.